ever given is now on her way in the Suez Canal to wherever she can be made fit to continue on her voyage to Europe. The vessel may be out of the media glare, but are the mariners manning her also out of harm's way? There is some speculation in the press that the Egyptian authorities may now try to pin the blame for the stranding of the ship and the subsequent financial losses to the Suez Canal on the ship's master and its crew. We spoke to some eminent experts on what the legal position of ship staff is in such a situation and what protection is available to them. Close um, on the heels of the uh, Bakashi oil spill in Mauritius, uh, we are now faced with another maritime disaster, another grounding at that. The media management officials uh, have thus far done a relatively good job of uh, reducing speculation uh, to the minimum uh, by releasing periodical uh, hints at blaming the weather, so to speak. You know, what particularly strikes me about this incident is the sheer cruel coincidence of one of the largest container vessels to transit the canal running aground in one of its narrowest sections, uh, thus blocking traffic in both directions. In fact, had it not been for the overwhelming indications to the contrary, one might be excused for entertaining sinister thoughts of uh, sabotage, terrorism, etc. Now, in my article, I have uh, articulated the likely proximate causes of the incident and they are likely to be one or a combination of several. Obviously, natural calamities such as uh, a sudden strong gust of wind and poor visibility uh, comes to mind. We generally accept that like most canals, uh, the Suez is difficult to navigate uh, during strong winds or in poor visibility. But you know, this present, uh, this ever-present term, uh, act of God, this time I think God has been kind in more ways than one. First of all, by aligning the three heavenly bodies in line to create spring tides within uh, a week of the incident, that is on Sunday and Monday. Uh, this natural phenomena has uh, undoubtedly, and of course undoubtedly the relentless uh, uh, efforts of the salvers as they raced against time, have been instrumental in uh, freeing and refloating the vessel. And secondly, you know, it was very fortunate that the Maersk Denver, which was following the Ever Given, managed to stop just in time. Uh, because a damaged Evergreen, uh, Ever Given, would have become so much more difficult to refloat. So what are the likely causes uh, that uh, we are looking at? Uh, machinery failure, of course, is one of them. Uh, human error, naturally, uh, involving two uh, aspects. One is uh, ship staff and the other is interaction between the uh, pilot and the uh, bridge management team. And of course, between the pilot and the shore uh, tugboats as well, uh, or the shore uh, port control as well. Um, then there is uh, systems failure, uh, such as uh, a lack of uh, risk assessment. And we also have to consider the inadequate depth of water uh, due to siltation. But however, that seems remote because of the frequent surveys that are carried out in the Suez. Now, what are the uh, implications and consequences? There are several, but uh, a future uh, casualty inquiry is likely to examine um, at least these aspects. Now, fortunately, the crew are safe. They've all been accounted for. And mercifully this time, the incident has not resulted in any uh, uh, catastrophic environment damage. Thus, uh, the damages are restricted to property, uh, that means ship property and port infrastructure, and of course commercial claims. So legal liabilities are restricted. Um, there is also the aspect to be considered of ship and port management responsibility. Then, and very important, review of the standard operating procedures and mandatory risk assessment uh, including critical limits of meteorological conditions with demand, aborting of port operations, etc. and risk management like for example tugboat es uh, escort policy, deployment of tugs considering vessel size, uh, freeboard and windage, etc. And then one has to consider the fine balance between safety and commercial uh, expediency and the means to ensure that safety is always paramount. So it's possible that you know given the weather uh, this uh, convoy could have been, uh, you know, delayed. Uh, and naturally, the last being the resources available to ensure that a vessel is able to maintain 
uh, speed between uh, the maximum allowed in restricted waters such as the Suez and the minimum required for steerage way uh, and to do so consistently and over a prolonged length of time. So let us see how things pan out and we hope the best and uh, our wishes and good um, prayers are with the master and the crew. The world community can now heave a sigh of relief that the vessel MV ever given has been refloated and Suez Canal has been cleared for traffic. The vessel has now been repositioned at Great Bitter Lake within Egyptian waters. There she will undergo an extensive inspection to ascertain her seaworthiness. We are also fortunate that master and crew had, did not suffer any injuries. They are all safe. The ship did suffer certain structural damages. The investigation process has already commenced. However, it's a very complex investigation process because of the way vessels are operated in present days. The ship has a Japanese owner. It is chartered and operated by the Taiwanese company Evergreen. The vessel is registered in Panama. Technical management is by Bernard Schuld, a German company who also recruited the master and crew from India. In addition, there are other stakeholders such as the cargo owners, the insurers for uh, Holland Missionary and the P&I clubs which insures third party liabilities of the ship. In addition, the fact that it's been carrying containerized cargo also adds to the complexity while apportioning losses. In addition to the owner and the charterer, in case of a container vessel, the slot charterer, NVOCC and the freight forwarders coming to the picture. Maritime law has a mechanism in general average and the York Antwerp rules to add a portion losses of the individual parties involved in the common adventure. The liability for damages caused to the ship or to the Suez Canal will be decided by the Egyptian courts because the accident occurred in Egyptian waters which is under the territorial jurisdiction of Egypt. If you go by past cases, there had been a tendency to attribute blame on the master and crew, notwithstanding the fact that no act or omission on their part caused the accident. The liabilities are have to be attributed either to the vessel and its crew or the Suez Canal authorities and their pilots. Now this past practice of attempting to attribute liability on master and crew and the vessel is due to two distinct reasons. One reason is the fact that ships are well insured. Holland machinery insurance as well as the third party insurance by the P&I clubs. The second aspect is that the ships by an international convention can legitimately limit the liability for any damage caused by the vessel based on the tonnage of the vessel. On the other hand, the Suez Canal authorities or a port authority or a harbor authority or the pilots or its employers cannot limit liability in such a manner. In view of this, the professional associations of master mariners worldwide are of the view that the master and crew must get robust legal defense when the fact of attributability of blame is tried before the Egyptian courts. 
I've been informally in touch with some of these uh, members of these professional organizations who are also involved in maritime training and maritime law training in universities in UK and Korea. They are all of the view that no effort should be spared towards giving the best legal defense to the master and crew while it is tried before the Egyptian courts or before any other court or tribunal. Sincere is greeting and best wishes for uh, rather belated best wishes for the holy. The entire shipping community was uh, shook up when on 23rd of March, the world was confronted with an unprecedented situation. Ever given the massive 400 feet, 20,000 TEU container vessel had impaled herself into the banks of Suez Canal at around 151 kilometer mark. Uh, this incident not just shocked, but also shook the entire shipping, uh, shipping community along with the world at large. Ever Given, which was transiting through the Suez Canal, uh, reports uh, indicate that uh, encountered a, a strong sandstorm with winds gusting up to 40 knots. And this probably resulted in the loss of ability to steer the ship, causing her hull to deviate. As we all know, Suez Canal is a lifeline which links the Far East to the Europe. And now this had been blocked by this huge vessel. The movement of goods through the canal had come to a sudden and grinding halt. Various experts worldwide voiced their opinions, presented on uh, different aspects of this incident, opinions varying from how to refloat the vessel to the economic repercussions as an aftermath. The incident was widely covered in every conceivable media with every person even remotely connected giving his opinion. In all this flood of information flow, there was hardly any views suggesting support to the turmoil and tension of the seafarers on board. It's very difficult for anybody to grasp the mental state of the captain and his crew. The stresses they were going through, especially with the whole world focusing on the incident. I am pretty sure that they must have undergone a pretty harrowing and extremely troubling time. However, from the information trickling out, we did hear some comments on commendable job that the ship's crew were doing. After nearly six days of sustained efforts, the vessel was finally refloated with collective valiant efforts by the Suez Canal authorities, the salvers, and of course the ship's crew along with all the others who were involved in the operation. We hope, now that the vessel is refloating and the operation is successful, the excellent efforts and the contribution of the ship's crew is also recognized. In the backdrop of these stressful days faced by the crew and the complex circumstances in which they found themselves, their grit, their contribution does deserve our recognition. It also shows how momentous is the role of shipping in the international supply chain. And the credit for maintaining this supply chain, especially in the present COVID times, uh, is purely on the extraordinary contribution of each and every seafarer around the world. Not forgetting the excellent support they are getting from the overworked show staff. I am uh, quite sure that there is bound to be an investigation into the ever given uh, incident, not just to identify the cause, but also probably to revise the transit rules and guidelines. We are all uh, fervently hoping that along with others, the exemplary performance of the ship's crew is also given a positive recognition.